You are with the big story here. I'm Seher Zama. Thanks for being with us. Uh, first day of the week here. Of course, weekdays and weekends all seem alike, but it's important to sit, put, stay at home and stay safe. The numbers continue to rise in the course of the weekend. Today, we're looking at India having crossed the thousand mark in the number of positive cases. Right now, we're sitting at 1,071 people in all infected. The number of deaths, unfortunately, has gone up as well. 29 people reported dead. Maharashtra continues to have the highest numbers, both in terms of positive cases as well as the reported deaths in Maharashtra. Eight deaths with 218 confirmed cases. Kerala coming in with uh, 213 cases as India continues to fight the coronavirus. The numbers increase and becomes all the more important here to understand the seriousness of the lockdown. We're getting in baking and breaking inputs here coming in. Uh, this is in Mumbai's Worli area. The fisherman colony, which is uh, known as Kolivara. Well, this has been completely sealed. It has been completely locked down for public movement. From public movement, a disinfection and fumigation process here of the area has now been initiated. Uh, this, of course, in terms of precautionary measures here that are being taken. Let it, let's get in further inputs. Our correspondent Mayuresh is uh, getting us these details here uh, on, on a humongous task. Mayuresh, of course, this is a very crowded area that we're looking at, uh, but uh, the imperative fumigation process that now needs to start here. Uh, this is not only crowded area, but one of the oldest area. Right now, I'm standing at the Kolivan and behind me, can, you can see that the Mumbai police have sealed this area. No one from uh, the area, from inside, is allowed to come out. And no one from outside is allowed to go in. You can see uh, at, the, at this very uh, point, the police is there. Uh, police presence is there. The police is also doing a patrolling. As we, uh, we were saying about the fumigation and uh, uh, sanitization, the work is already uh, started inside. Uh, because uh, four suspected people have been found in this particular area and that's why Mumbai police uh, BMC have taken the immediate steps and they have sealed this entire area so for uh, next few days till the time uh, Mumbai police or the BMC feels that uh, this is safe for the common people to come out no one is allowed to come out of their house only one person from each family is allowed to uh, to come out and that is only to purchase uh, the essential commodities and essential goods. You can see Mumbai police personnel are here and you can see the entire area is locked down by the Mumbai police and the BMC because four suspected uh, positive cases have been found from this area and that's why Mumbai police and BMC have taken this step. Back to you. All right, uh, Mayuresh, this is, of course, the process which is uh, currently on, is what you're sh uh, showing to us here in a complete lockdown in this fisherman's colony. This is in Verli, which is in Mumbai. Uh, yes, we can see official vans, the police patrolling, which is currently underway here as well. Uh, Mayuresh, we've, of course, seen uh, how uh, last week, of course, today we are already six days down of the lockdown, uh, where people have better understood the importance of this lockdown here. Uh, and now that you see work happening, this is disinfection and fumigation process, which has now started here. Uh, Mayuresh, this is also uh, a very imperative confidence building measure, not just an imperative, but confidence building measure here as well, that while we are sitting at home, our streets are being cleaned, disinfection and fumigation process that has to have started is now, of course, taking place in the most crowded of areas as well. Uh, yes, because M Mumbai police and BMC have chalked out that plan. Uh, till the time people are not there, they don't want any, any untoward incident should happen in such areas which are totally isolated or which don't have any kind of that movement of uh, travellers or any kind of that history. So that's why Mumbai police and especially the BMC is cleaning up the roads every day. They, are uh, they have chalked out the plan that where they will be doing the fumigation and from, uh, if you remember, from Mankur, the area of Mumbai, they started, which is another crowded area uh, in uh, Mumbai city. So from that area they have started. But if you talk about the Worli Kolivara, you can see this is, these are the very short lens, uh, narrow lens of the Worli Kolivara. And this is one of the oldest fishermen colony uh, of uh, Mumbai. And uh, from the uh, road, at least you can see that though this is, this doesn't look like a narrow road, but when the crowd is there, when the shop starts, uh, it becomes a very crowded area. And it's a very old colony. So we have been given to understand that four suspected uh, have been found from this particular area. And that's why we 
DMC and Mumbai police have taken this decision to completely seal this area and not allow any kind of a civil movement, not allow the uh, residents to move out mm -hmm. of their house and no one is basically allowed to come uh, from the outside in this area. Uh, the BMC have already started the fumigation of this particular area. Their team is still inside and they are doing this fumigation process so that uh, uh, as you can see that see the person uh, with this gas cylinder he wants to come in but the police is telling them uh, that uh, no, you are not supposed to come in and they have completely locked down the area okay. because he is uh, he's, uh, he's trying he's basically saying that he's a resident of this area yes. but still he is not being allowed you can see that the person uh, has come with a cylinder over here mm -hmm. back to you Yes, this is a process, of course, to continue for a few hours here uh, in a complete lockdown here, uh, an important fumigation process of the entire locality. Shops, shutters down, roads, shutters, all being fumigated as we speak. Our deputy news editor, Mayuresh, has gotten us those inputs here. Many thanks, Mayuresh. Prime Minister Modi is to speak to Indian envoys globally. This is to take place today at 5 p.m. This is, of course, going to be taking place via video conferencing here. Prime Minister Modi is going to be having a conversation uh, with uh, global envoys uh, of uh, India. Uh, this is at a time, of course, uh, uh, when uh, many, many Indians, NRIs with family back home here in the country uh, have raised certain concerns. Uh, also, as far as movement back and forth of families that have been separated across the world here, a lot of those issues that would be taken up here as well, and further course of action in the course of this lockdown as we're witnessing. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Aditya Nath is to conduct an aerial survey of the state. Remember, this is coming in mind, keeping in mind the mass exodus of migrant workers, of thousands of lakhs of people, uh, essentially from Delhi, who were headed back to Uttar Pradesh, wanting to be back home, having lost uh, rent homes, rented up homes, having lost their job with no money, no water, no food, were headed back home on foot. Arrangements for them have now been made, of course, with special buses, but an aerial survey is to be conducted by the Chief Minister of UP today as well. He is to shortly reach the Hindon Air Base here uh, to meet with officials and then carry out this aerial survey. Our correspondent Mohit is getting us those inputs here uh, on what all is to be taken into account in this aerial survey. Mohit, this is going to be important, of course, when several buses uh, have been uh, appointed by the UP Transport Department here to bring back migrant workers who had gathered in at the Anand Bihar bus terminus in Delhi. Well, absolutely, Afrida. And what we can tell you is a fresh update uh, that we're getting to know that uh, the aerial survey has just begun. Uh, Yogi Aditana, the UPCM, has in fact uh, taken off uh, uh, in his helicopter from uh, from the Hinden Air Base uh, right outside where we're standing. And, uh, you know, you were talking about the buses which have essentially been allocated, which have been asked to, uh, you know, ensure that uh, all the migrants who were essentially, you know, who had gathered in, in mass numbers uh, at various borders of Delhi and Uttar Pradesh and, uh, you know, other states as well, they should... Be be, uh, they should be brought back home. It was a very welcome move by the Uttar Pradesh CM. Uh, but at the same time, you know, today's aerial survey is more of uh, an understanding, not just for uh, for the officers, but at, this, at, the, at the CM level as well. He's trying to assess as to what exactly could have been done. And at the same time, if there are still mass gatherings taking place in and around the NCR area. Now, we've seen that at least uh, at least a lakh people had, ga had gathered uh, over the past uh, one week uh, at uh, the Anand Vihar ISBT. And what was important there is the fact that people people uh, just wanted to go back home. Now, at the same time, you know, what was also of importance is the fact that they had claimed that they did not have proper accommodation, uh, shelter, and at the same time, you know, food. Mm -hmm. Ration is something that they were really looking for, and uh, that, those were precisely the reason why they were, why they decided to, you know, uh, migrate to their own, uh, to their own home states, or for that matter, to their houses. But right now, you know, what we can tell you is the fact that the aerial survey has essentially begun. We're still waiting uh, and uh, we'll, we'll still wait for the official word as to what exactly came out of it. But nevertheless, the UPCM, you know, we, we know for, for a matter that he had, in fact, ordered around 1,000 buses to ensure that these, uh, these migrant workers are taken back home. The same were deployed yesterday as well. Today we saw a different picture at uh, the various uh, uh, bordering areas as well. So something seems to be working mm -hmm. at this particular point. We still have to see as to what exactly is the conclusion of today's aerial survey. Back to you, sir.
order to move it. Thank you. Thank you for the greatness of those inputs. And of course, when that starts, we we'll get further inputs there from you. Kerala High Court uh, has granted interim bail uh, and this is to the trial prisoners and uh, remand accused. This is in light of uh, decongesting prisons here. Uh, prisons, Kerala High Court having granted interim bail to the trial prisoners uh, in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak. Interim bail that has now been currently granted up to the 30th of April. So this is uh, a duration of one month here for the trial, under trial prisoners and the remand accused. Uh, to be stepping out now. Well, this is a crucial report coming in from the national capital. This is in the Nizamuddin area where around 200 people there in the given area who had complained of cough and fever have now been isolated. We're looking at a large number here. They had gathered for a religious sermon behind the Darga. Uh, at least 1,000 others have now been asked to stay at home, not leave their buildings. The police is using a drone as well here to keep tabs on their movement. Our correspondent Alok getting us further inputs here. Alok, this is unfortunate where people just don't get it. Irrespective of the nature of the gathering, they cannot be gathering in such large numbers here. And now you have... Uh, uh, a police supervision here to ensure no one's stepping out with 200 people already having complained of cough and fever. Yes, absolutely, sir. In fact, right now I'm standing uh, near uh, the Nizamuddin Darga and my camera person will show you uh, that there you can see the medical checkup camp. And this medical checkup camp is uh, in fact set up here just to do the checkup of those people who are coming and complaining about cough or any kind of fever. In fact, there is white color building. You can see that white color building where that religious uh, sermon was happening for past several days. And still there, more than 1,000 people are uh, staying and now the police has asked that all those 1000 persons mostly of them are of uh, various countries various places various places in the country as well that uh, most of them are outsiders they are still asked to remain inside the building if anybody complains of any kind of chest pain or if any symptoms comes out they can come out and then they first do their checkup at their checkup camp uh, and then they will be asked to, and, and in fact, then they will be taken uh, to the hospitals uh, at various hospitals in the national capital. There you can see the police persons are also, also going inside. Police is trying to ensure that nobody is going uh, towards that building. And if those who are still in the building, they are mm -hmm. not allowed to come outside that building. Uh, they are only allowed to okay. come outside building if they are comp if they if they have any sort of complaint of or any kind of symptoms of uh, coronavirus so so this is what all has happening already 200 persons who had already uh, uh, attended this religious gathering 200 mm -hmm. persons have already been shifted to various hospital and they are being quarantined so this all has happened uh, so we hope that okay. those who are still inside or uh, those who are outside they will not be in fact affected with this coronavirus back to you Yes, and to keep safe now, of course, this is under supervision here since uh, 200 out of the 1,000 who attended that gathering have complained of cough and fever. Alok, thank you for getting us those inputs. This is a shocking case now that's coming from Uttar Pradesh. Uh, if, you, if you look at these images here, uh, one would think the level of insensitivity or the circumstances under which this was done. Uh, this is absolutely appalling. Breaking details coming in with those visuals on your screens here on how chemical disinfectant was sprayed on a group of workers. They had just reached Bareilly. They were made to sit in the middle of the road uh, and uh, this is a disinfectant which is sodium hydrochloride based disinfectant which was sprayed on the group. This included women and children. Many of the labourers complained of a burning sensation in their eyes. Uh, they had just come in, remember many of these migrant labourers who have moved in mass numbers to be headed back home. Uh, this was taken as a precautionary measures for movement that has taken place but unpardonable. 
to be doing this on people like this and spraying chemical disinfectant. Our senior correspondent Amir is getting us further inputs here on this uh, while we play out these images for you that this is this has really happened. The process of disinfecting being to the extent that if migrant laborers have traveled a distance and finally come back home in Bareilly are being sprayed chemical disinfectant in this manner. Let's get you updates here now that are coming in from down south in the state of Kerala. Remember, Kerala remains one of the worst affected here uh, in the largest, one of the largest numbers of positive cases uh, with suicide cases now that are being reported as well. This is from various parts of the state of Kerala because liquor sales were stopped, following which suicide has taken place. Chief Minister Vijayan has directed the excise department now to provide liquor to those with a prescription from doctors. Let's get in further details. Our correspondent Vivek getting us those inputs here. Vivek, uh, this is of course being uh, badly hit by the stop in the sale of liquor. But what is the prescription that you get from the doctors to allow to buy liquor in this time of the lockdown? See, uh, this prescription is actually an idea that's mooted by Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan. Uh, you know, uh, it was actually an idea that was put forward. It's not been implemented as of now. Uh, you know, a few days back in the press conference also, Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan said that, you know, if at all, uh, you know, for people who have these withdrawal symptoms, extreme cases of withdrawal symptoms, and people who cannot live mm -hmm. with alcohol, they can buy alcohol with a prescription uh, uh, from a physician or a psychiatrist. And, you know, uh, then, uh, you know, he can send it to the excise department and hence uh, the excise department can provide liquor. So this is actually, uh, you know, an idea that's mooted by Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan, but the Kerala IMA and the KGMOA, that is a, a Kerala government, uh, you know, association for doctor, doctor association, have, you know, clearly said that this is uh, purely an illogical move and, you know, it's not feasible and also it is against the ethics, uh, the medical ethics. Uh, but many people, uh, you know, if you look at the last two right. weeks, there has been six But, but Vivek, of, uh, this is, uh, in, instead of providing more alcohol to those who are addicted here in getting a doctor's prescription first, uh, what about de-addiction centers then? See, uh, there are de-addiction centers that's been started in every district of Kerala. That's all the 14 districts of Kerala. And yes, people are uh, going there. Uh, but, you know, there are certain extreme uh, cases where people just cannot, uh, you know, afford uh, going to de-addiction center, you know, uh, and, you know, they just uh, want alcohol. So in these certain extreme cases, uh, you know, uh, what happens is people, there are, you know, uh, uh, four instances that's been reported in the last two weeks where, you know, where youngsters, you know, especially between the age of 30 and uh, 35 have, uh, you know, uh, attempted to commit suicide and of which six people committed suicide and, you know, certain people are being moved to the de-addiction centers. Uh, government says that this is indeed a very, very uh, grave issue that has to be seen because people are supposed to stay inside the houses. They're not supposed to go outside. And, you know, uh, for especially for, uh, you know, uh, alcoholics, uh, you know, this is a major issue. Uh, they, they have to find uh, some kind of solace in something. So when right. they don't get liquor, uh, what happens is, you know, they 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 actually forced to do things, uh, you know, that could also lead to social issues. There has been instances where, uh, you know, there has been confrontation, okay. there has been issues uh, within the family that's been reported. So in this particular, uh, you know, instance, it's the chief minister right. of Pindai Vijayan has mooted this plan. And now uh, the, the IMA has clearly said that, you know, it's not possible. It needs to be seen as what the excise department is planning to do next. Mm hmm Vivek, many thanks for getting us those details. This is, of course, keeping in mind that uh, suicide cases have now been reported here because of the unavailability of liquor. We'll leave it at that. Let's get your inputs now that are coming in from Chennai. Uh, this is where people have been seen standing in long queues uh, outside the police commissioner's office in Chennai uh, to get in very, very important no objection certificates. This is permission that you can be granted to travel within the state if absolutely as an urgency. The Chennai police has recently decided to open a helpline here as well for people with emergencies to move about in the state. They've already received close to 8,000 applications. Our correspondent Shilpa is getting us this ground input. 
We are reporting from outside the Chennai City Police Commissioner's office here in Chennai and you can see how there is a big queue, a long queue outside the Commissioner's office. This because the Chennai Police had opened a helpline number uh, where people can call and place requests if at all they need to travel out of the state for some kind of emergency. Uh, you know, uh, there is a helpline number and an email ID that has been given by the Chennai Police and if at all, you know, people have some kind of emergency where they need to travel out of the state it can be uh, a funeral or a, a wedding function or some kind of medical emergency then they can uh, you know put in that request and the Chennai police will process uh, that particular request and they are uh, required to submit proof uh, of the this particular emergency as well and what we're given to understand is that ever since uh, you know the Chennai police uh, opened this particular helpline they've been getting several requests they've been flooded with requests and uh, this uh, long queue outside the commission office is just proof of that and uh, you know uh, and the police of course at this point in time is saying that people should not make uh, frivolous requests only if it is an emergency they, they should approach because they've been flooded uh, with requests and the local police is also doing some kind of uh, you know checking to see whether these uh, requests are genuine in fact I'll just try and speak to some of them here sir you're here uh, to meet the you know to give a representation to the police uh, what is the emergency that you are facing and uh, is this the first time you're uh, approaching the police yeah this is the first time actually my father has expired uh, i need to go to bangalore now so i'm here to get the noc uh, from uh, 10 o'clock only they are allowing maybe if they make this process somewhat smoother maybe in the local police station so that we can get the process faster we can reach the destinations quicker uh, sir how long have you been waiting and what is the emergency that you are facing so we are waiting for half an hour uh, for my emergency sir my grandfather was uh, ill so we are waiting for the queue uh, morning itself we came here uh, they gave a token and we are standing in the queue so many people have gone inside uh, i think they need a proper document to the emergency purpose if the document is correct so they will approve for the emergency. So purpose. where do you uh, want to travel? Where is your grandfather coming? Uh, I am in Chennai now. I am going to Purukottai to travel here from to Purukottai. So we are waiting here for, for the queue. So clearly, you know, there are several such people who are standing here. They all have uh, their own uh, problems and they want to travel. And that is the reason why they've taken a token and they're standing in these long queues to, uh, you know, get inside and get that NOC letter. We're getting in breaking inputs here of the Indian Army uh, sending out a warning against fake messages on social media. The Army, in fact, has tweeted out and clarifying reports of uh, that messages on social media about a likely declaration of emergency in mid-April is absolutely false. The Army, one saying that this is a fake message, this is false, and also has warned against spreading this nature of fake messages on social media without any verification. The Army makes it very clear that this is a fake message as far as declaration of emergency in mid-April is concerned.